with clear, with clear proof of guidance and a distinctive criterion which decides the right from wrong, from day from night, from halal from haram. And Allah subhanahu wa said, whoever witnessed this month, that is living in this month, or month of Ramadan, inshallah about three weeks away, then the person has to fast. But there is some rukhsa exception for those who man kana mari or ala safar. Those are travelers and those are sick. Sick people and travelers. By the extension of the word sickness, somebody is old, they are also inclusive of that, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his old age also gets sickness. But having said that, that sick people are, and uh, traveling people are exempt from fasting. If they want to fast, they still can, but this is a ruksa, better not to fast. But both are okay to do from the sunnah of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Having said that, both are allowed to fast, or you can break your fast, your choice to make. But those who do break their fast, you have to make up for those things. And Allah said, having said that, Allah said, يُرِدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْ Allah wants it easy for you, and وَلَا يُرِدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْ Allah doesn't want hardship for you. This is one of the usul principles of this religion. Allah wants ease, doesn't want hardship. And ease by his definition, not my and your definition. Okay? Allah doesn't want hardship. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Woman can marry the Allah of the Jesuit, you Allah be the Muslim, while you did the most, while you took me the Aja, while you took a bill of Maha, Alama had it. So make sure you fix, uh, make up those days and describe the greatness of Allah's Zawi. You took a bill of Maha, why Alama had that room? Because he brought you upon guidance. Huh? And so you can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a month which is coming, inshallah. We waited about 11 months for this month. People wait for months after months. This is a month we waited 11 months. Allah This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like when you're waiting for someone coming in the airport gate, right? Somebody says, flight supposed to be 1.30 p.m. As soon as it's 1.25, you're looking through the window and the person there. Then you open the gate of the aircraft here. So the person is sitting in the aircraft. You go through immigration, you take a longer time, you have to go. Be patient. And keep looking. You know it's not time, you keep looking. A Muslim who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <coughs> deen of Allah is there, they keep looking. When is month of Ramadan coming? They see Sha'ban, they see Rajab, they say, when month of Ramadan comes? How many days left? They're eagerly waiting for this month, they can take the maximum benefit out of it. And this is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a month for going to Jannah. This is a month to get Allah's forgiveness. This is a month when the hellfire is closed. And Allah wants it to be closed upon us. Unless we insist on getting into it. This is a month to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. This is a month to be conscious of Allah for taqwa. So this is a month that has many benefits to it. It's a month of dimension of month. And we have to talk about each of the elements of humanity, inshallah, to get benefits from it. I'm sure that this is not news for you. You hear this every year. But a reminder is always good for me and good for you. So this is a discussion of reminder, inshallah. This is a month of forgiveness. Rasulullah said in an authentic hadith, by the way, all the hadith, inshallah, I'm going to quote, most of them from Mustafid and Ali, from Bukhari and Muslim. If not the case, at least they have the level of Hassan, inshallah. Right. So Rasulullah said, who worked them, who got the entire month of Ramadan, but could not get their sin forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a loss. What a loss. Rasulullah said that if you get this entire month of Ramadan and it's still this bonus period you get, still you did not get maximum benefit out of it by getting forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as soon as you hear this, this is a bonus period. Let me tell you, tell you something about uh, 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 financial markets, right? The stock industry. Every time the stock increases, like people look at the curve. I don't know if anybody know about that. You see the curve. As soon as the curve is going up, people are excited that the stock gained value. As soon as it goes farther up, they're even happier. <coughs> right? We're getting more out of it. They just look and see it's growing. They're happier. And sometimes that every growth has a fall. Sometimes it's going to fall face down. So you have to be smart enough to get off from the stock market. I'm not saying it's halal, but I'm just saying the mechanics of it. So, uh, get out the maximum benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you this month. You need to maximize your benefit. How do you do that? With a good preparation. 
What kind of preparation? You got 11 months to be ready for that. People go to Olympics, they practice for years after years to go. People go to World Cup, they practice for four years to maximize the benefit for a few games only. Allah give me 11 months. I want to ask the brothers and sisters, are you ready for it? Are we ready for it? If not, still we have some time left to be prepared for it. And whoever gets this month and cannot get their sin forgiven, they are the most unlucky, per se, people. So we don't want it among them. In this month, according to Abu Huraira, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes the door of the hellfire and opens the door of paradise. This is the month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives without account. Every hasanah you can get 10 times, until 700 times by the narration and Allah gives as He pleases حساب, He gives without any account subhanahu wa ta'ala but fact remains there is a number associated with it anybody make salah in jama'ah could be 25 to 27 times a number associated with that so you can say this many salah I did this many askar I did this many hasanat I get so these are finite elements in mathematics in numbers this is finite element and in the Prophet and Allah Azza wa Jal in Hadith al Qudsi that as siyamu li wa ana ajdibi kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fasting is exclusively for myself and I reward by myself. But guess what? Salah reward comes from Allah also. Sadaqah reward comes from Allah also. So what is the difference? This is an exclusive. Other are general. This is khawas. There are am. Humum is lack. Khusus are very little in number. So Allah making a special privilege Allah gave to the Muslims today that you give up food for me even the food is halal you give up your look for me you give up your tongue for me even though all of them are allowed for you to do only for my pleasure without seeing me without seeing the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I reward you without their account this is day of judgment every people will go through a door day of judgment paradise has eight doors each of them has an exclusive privilege Siyam has an exclusive privilege also. Man kana min ahl al-siyam du'iya min baad al-rayyan kama qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akhraju imam al-bukhari that whoever fans subhanallah exclusive get for them to go to paradise home to call min rayyan sallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala ajarana min hum now this month is special this month is forgiveness this month is going to paradise this month getting most possible reward from it I gave this example many times, perhaps boring for many people to give. I see many people work for Black Friday. There's nothing wrong with that. They just work for 4 July sale. They're just working for a chance to maximize the profit. You want to buy a laptop, cost 300, they want to buy it for $100. They want to take some money. My brother, my sister, says $200 once you die has no value to you. After six months, it is irrelevant. When you buy a new car for six months, you're excited about it. After that, Become, yeah, this is the car I had. After 10 years, looking for a junkie to drop it. This is how it is. But what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is forever. What is with Allah azza wa jal? This is permanent. This is the best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever does some good in this month, to Allah is waiting for their reward. To Allah is their reward. For the Muslim looking for sale in 4th July, Muslim looking for a sale in Black Friday, Muslim no <coughs> sale has arrived. Very soon in the month of Ramadan, what is preparation for? One man came to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him that, Mata Sa'ad, when is the day of judgment? This is the, this is the wisdom of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The level of intellect, it is the level of saturation to the maximum point of human intelligence. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not go into the detail of the date and time of the day of judgment. He did, by the way, he doesn't know it. He asked the person, Mata Sa'ad, what preparation you have for that day? So when it comes to the relevant, are you prepared for it? That is relevant. Are you relevant? Are you ready for this month? Many Muslims to them, Ramadan is another month, except eating a little food, a part of the, the food you miss the entire day. That is food damage there. This is not any month you just give up food. This month has goal and objective. This month, you want to get close to Allah. When the month starts, you take account of yourself. When the month ends, you ask yourself, did I profit anything else? 30 days in a month of Allah's mercy, have I gained something extra out of it? If not, what a loss. So we need to think, brothers and sisters, this month has a lot of benefit. Allah said, I reward without any account. This is a month, a month of taqwa. 
الله عز وجل كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. Not eating food, this is a requirement, but it's not an objective of the Bible. Right? Many people forget the difference between tools and goals, objectives and means. They're different. Not eating food and other things you don't do in this month, these are requirements. But goal is Ubudiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah wa ma'khalat kul jinnah wal ins illa li'abudu. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, Ubudiya al-Islam wa al-Khan. He's religion of fertility. And one of them is fasting in the month of Ramadan. It is sad, I heard and saw, many Muslims even do not fast. Those who fast, we have a lot to talk about. Those who do not even fast, subhanAllah, hell, exam, job, these are excuses. Brothers and sisters, when you stand in front of Allah, you have judgment, empty handed. Mankind is standing from Allah, billions and trillions of people are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa in a day, there is no friend. All enemies. There is no friend, only enemies in the day of judgment, except if Allah is your friend. Wallahu alayhi If you took Allah as your friend, he got him there. Any friendship, the dunya will be destroyed that day. So that everybody is looking to put other person down so they can be safe from the hellfire. Except Allah is the He is the merciful one. So if you deny Allah, Allah denies you in the day of judgment. This is a month coming. A Muslim, young generations, will they give up your computer game? Muslim generations, will you forget wasting time in the internet? Muslims, brothers who are working overtime for extra dollars, will you stop some overtime and get some overtime from Allah in the month of Ramadan? Will you do that? Overtime of the dunya, I swear by Allah, the Lord of the universe, that every person with millions and billions, when they die, they die empty handed. Your overtime goes to somebody else, doesn't go with you. But if we are ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month, the sadaqah, the qayyamul layl, the tawbah, and love of Allah is the that remains, until day of judgment and beyond day of judgment. When day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will manifest himself with his creation. And he said, That then the faces will be enlightened because they'll be looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your work to Allah azza wa remains until the day of judgment. Your work in the dunya remains till the last breath you have. By the way, where are we running? Allah says, where are you going? Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbika al-kareem. Why people are so deceived from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Well, Allah is the one who gave everything they own, perhaps. You can call it own. You don't really own anything. Allah is the malik al He He's the owner of it. You're the custodian of it. Custodian difference is that you don't own it. You just service and maintain it. Allah is the owner. Allah is the malik yawm al-din. Allah is the malik al-mulk. He is the king of the kings. He is the king of this kingdom. And we are only slaves. Slave doesn't own anything. But the Sha'i, Islamic Sha'i law, slave doesn't have any ownership. The master owns them. So we are slave of Allah's dhazar. Allah owns us. So I don't know why we claim ownership of something we don't even own our own self. The Muslim needs to know, who are conscious of this, that separate the dunya, so one step at a time. We are too much into it. Talk is sweet. But once we talk, we need to walk the walk. The Muslim, keep in mind, this month is month of taqwa. What is this taqwa anyway? سُمِنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْ أَكْثَرِ مَا يُخْرِ النَّاسُ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَقْوَى اللَّهَ هُسْنُ الْخُلُّ كَمَا تَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ What takes the most people to the paradise? Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He said the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Consciousness about being Allah Being close to Allah and good character The taqwa is an element takes people to the paradise And taqwa is an element makes people friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah has said إِنَّ أَوْلِيَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَهْدَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كَانُوا يَسْتَقُونَ The Wami of Allah has nothing to worry, nothing to fear. Because His Lord is going to protect us. If Allah gives security, who else can take it away from you? If Allah gives peace, who can give stress? If Allah gives stress, who else can give peace? No one. So Allah gives security. Allah said, my Wali has nothing to worry. Who are the Wali and Awliya of Allah and Zawajal? الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كَانُوا يَسْتَقُونَ those who believe and those who are, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have nothing to worry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is the month, la tattaqun. This is the month so you can get taqwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you can be wali of Allah as Gaudil, so you can go to paradise. This is the month of taqwa. And this taqwa, Allah says, In tattaqullaha yaj'al lakum furqana. If you fear Allah, Allah gives you furqan. Furqan is a comprehensive word. 
very detailed, but in a short few words, Furqan is a distinctive criteria. People who the chemistry, you know, litmus test. You can figure out right from wrong. You can define acid versus alkali by using such a chemistry test. You can figure out what is hot and what is bad. What is sabir in al jannah, sabir in al nar. Perhaps it was the paradise, perhaps it was the hellfire. You can figure this out. But this is not academic. This is not the knowledge. It is knowledge and being conscious about Allah. So that's called taqwa. And those who have taqwa, they protect themselves. There's a dua Allah maqsim lana min khashyati ma tahudu bihi baynana bayna ma'ati. That dua says that we ask Allah to have enough consciousness, enough taqwa and fear of Allah that become a protective barrier between the sin and my soul. So I can protect it. This is taqwa. So Muslim should ask themselves, do I have it? Most likely not. How can I get it? This is the month of Ramadan. We should work on it. This is a month, for example, when Muslims fast the entire day because of lack of food, acidic reaction in the stomach, so on and so forth, people have, and you get some smell in your mouth. Obviously, this is not exciting. It doesn't smell like perfume. This is fast. So most of the people, yeah, I don't want to be too close to it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he loves it. So Allah's so-called way of doing things, it is unorthodox as far as we can say it. Something which is which is really uh, minute or uh, 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 insignificant to me, to Allah it's so big. Even the smell in the mouth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it. It's not the sweetness of the smell, because it's not sweet. Because the cause of the smell, a person gives up food for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah whom he did not see. Those who fear Allah without seeing Him, and we did not see Him, even that we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them there is a reward and forgiveness. And because we don't see Him in the dunya and choose to, choose to fear Him, subhanAllah, a day of judgment, Allah said, That day Allah will allow to see Him, because today we did not see Him, but still being obedient to Him. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the essence of Iman. Mm-hmm. So many of us rituals, many of us have clothing, so-called clothing of religion. Many of us have so-called religious activities, but the essence is missing. One of the key elements of every ibadah, including month of Ramadan, Every action is judged by the intention, and reward is proportional to the type of intention you have. So including fasting and any other ibadah, first shot is that ibadah has to be done to protect Allah. So by extension of this statement, I like to say this. Many Muslim months of Ramadan give a lot of sadaqah, rightfully so. Give a lot of iftar, which is good. But make sure this effort is for Allah. Many people come in their judgment <coughs> empty-handed, even though they thought they had a lot of stuff in there. An example, Example, I have a funny example by the way. I have some students, uh, uh, some failing students sometimes said, I thought I'm going to get there. They wrote something in the exam book and they said they're going to get there. I said, how do you think that? You failed. He said, I thought I'm going to get 95. I said, how in the world are you going to get 95? Look at the exam paper. Look at the example. You tell me, you're supposed to get 95? They said, I understand now. That's good. Yom al Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the book likewise. The Ikra Kitabi, Kafadi Nasik al Yom al Look at your book. Look at, it, look at your book, excuse me, your account, your record, and tell me what you deserve to be. Kafadi Nasik al Yom. Ali Kahasiba. You can yourself tell me where you belong. You're supposed to go to paradise. I ask myself, may Allah forgive my sin. I'm asking myself that the, the Jannah Abu Bakr Siddiq walks in. The Jannah Amr ibn Khattab walks in. Musa ibn Umayr. And Sadi bin Abi Wakash, Zubar ibn al Awwal, these are the people the Jannah they walk in. Sisters for you. The Jannah Fatima and Aisha, Umm Qusim and Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala and Ummah, walk in. Do you think you deserve to walk in the same Jannah? You must be joking. And if you wake up, because pretension is one of the major problems we have, we think it's so fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that one put a kum. Who are Ahlamu bin my taqa? Do not pretend that you suffice. Allah knows what is in your heart. May Allah forgive me for myself. No pretension here. If my sins Allah doesn't forgive, I'll be at a loss. His acknowledgement and confession to Allah is Ask Asking his forgiveness. So the point is nothing to pretend that I have become something. 
you become nothing unless Allah accepts it. So Muslim, this is the month of Ramadan coming. Again, consciousness, this activity in religion is about really connecting the mind with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every act with an askar, with giving somebody right, or giving iftar to somebody, has to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the hadith of Allah sallam, whoever gives food to somebody in the month of Ramadan, whoever gives somebody food to break fast in the month of Ramadan, as if the person get reward for fasting of that person also, without the person losing any hasanah from their account. Is it not the worship of Allah subhanahu You get free. They say buy, get, uh, buy one, get one free. A Muslim runs that free. Allah says you do this, I give you ten times more. You get one free, Allah says I can give you minimum 700 times or more. I give you 700 free. He give me one dollar today, end of the month, they give you seven dollars. Who doesn't want to invest in an account like that? SubhanAllah. Allah gives more than that. Still we ignore Allah zone as if we don't need Him. As if Allah needs us. For your information, Listen it carefully, brothers and sisters. Antumul fuqara hu ilallah. Wallahu hu al ghani. Man and woman that has been known, Allah doesn't need your penny. Your dying. Allah doesn't need your sajda. You subbihu lahu ma fi samawat wal ard. Everything in the earth and the heavens is obedient to Allah. Let us call to Allah. Some angels is in sajda from the beginning of the time till the end of the time. Never raise the hand of head of the angels. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fatabarak Allah rabbul alameen. This is Allah. Doesn't need you. But we are beggars. We need him. Let us act like beggars. A lot of us act like we are the king, being the slave of the king. Not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are the one who is 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 or sister may be standing outside and suffering from problems. But the Muslim, this is our obligation to be caring and loving to our brother and sister in general. Pray. So, this month of Ramadan is the month when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this book. This book. This book is not any book. What kind of book? Allah said, This is the book. Law anzalna hadha al Quran ala jabal. La rantahu khashiyan mutafadjan min khashiyan. This is a book Allah has done, and if he revealed on a mountain that would crumble out of the awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A mountain, millions of pounds of weight behind it, huge and humongous, and children of Adam, if you're six foot five, you walk in the street like you conquer the world. You seven foot tall, and you weigh 220 pounds, you act like there's nobody around you. You're the only one. Subhanallah. The mountain you stand in front of you, you look like non-existent. Allah said, this Qur'an goes up on the mountain, it will crumble. Allah said, إِنَّا عَرَنَّا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَاوَةِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ فَعَبَيْنَا يَحْمِ اللَّهُ وَأَشْفَقْنَا مِنَا وَحَمَ اللَّهُ الْإِنْسَانِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا People are ignorant and oppressive. They're criminals against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah wants you to give the weight of Iman and the deen of Allah and the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the mountains, over the heavens and the earth. Out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message in the weight of the Quran, they, they withdraw. They say, Allah, we can deal with it. Out of the fear of it, mankind, Muslims, <coughs> took the weight of Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the kalima and the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have no consciousness of what they have upon their shoulder. As if this is nothing. Muslims, one thing I'm going to conclude with. If you put an iron, you know, iron which is not galvanized. If you don't have galvanized because of oxidation, those become rusty. But months after months become rusty. When you get rusty, each of the layers of the molecules of the of the iron dies out. At a point, you can scrub the whole thing off and snap it. Our iman is in open weather. It's not galvanized due to the fact the moisture gets into it and destroys our iman. Every day from Fajr to Isha, we've been destroyed. Open the computer, we've been destroyed. Open the newspaper, we've been destroyed. Go to the job, we destroyed. This continuous infection within our soul, destroying from the within. Time has come that we have to work with our heart. Obviously, you need Iman, you need knowledge, 
you need you need continuous cultivating of the religion, but you need to focus on the heart. Iman has two parts. One is physical aspect, uh, emotional aspect, which is the heart, and other physical activities, which is connected to taqwa. And Allah, you know, this like the bit ayah of the Quran talks about the emotional aspect of it and physical aspect. A Muslim who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah said, but like the Quran told you, you have to give the Masjid al Masjid, you know, the whole ayah. Towards the end, Allah said, "Ma la la hubi da wal qurba wal yasam al masakin wa bna shabi wa sa'ad li farqad wa qamat salat wa tazka al mufur bi adim da ahad." So and so forth. The ayat ends with "Ulai ta ladina qadafu wa ulai ta hum al mustaqim." These are the characteristics of the people who are truthful and those who have taqwa. So what we should do? Open Surah Al Baqarah, Surah number two, verse number one hundred and seventy-seven. There Allah describes the characteristics of the people who have taqwa. So I start at the beginning of Ramadan, I see myself. You know, note that this is my characteristic. The end of Ramadan, I check, did I improve or not? Do I have the qualities of people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? According to the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 177. Ayah of Allah So this is a litmus test we have to do it. Because Allah is going to put us into the test there. It is better to be uh, preempted in this situation. Another thing in conclusion. But the basic, some of the basic law of nature, they call it, of science, we must to call it. I ask my kids sometimes, my kids are small ones, and even the older ones. You don't have to be too intelligent to understand that. If you have a glass, right, full of water, if I ask you how much air is in there, practically speaking, none. If you throw all the water out, what you have in there, most of the people say nothing. Most of the people say nothing, that's not true. Anytime, unless you're in a vacuum, there is always something, right? So you have air in there. If you have air in there, this, the, the cup has always something. Either some something or in that place will be air. One of the two has to be there. Your heart is like a cup. In there, something is always there. Either the dunya or the akhir. Either the deen and Allah or the jahal and the dunya. One of the two has to be there. You can't see both. You will be into the dunya, but dunya cannot be into the heart. An example, like a boat sailing on the water. You need water to sail, but you cannot get the water inside the boat. It's going to sink. So you have to be bring a delicate balance in your life that I am walking and sliding in the dunya, but I'm not going to let it leak into my life. If the boat has a leak, the water comes in, tips into it. And today or tomorrow, the boat is going to sink. But if a small leak do come in, you can take it out. By, you know, take the water, put the water, pump it out. The dunya will leak into our heart because we are humans. We need to pump it out. Pump it out by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By coming to the masjid, joining the halakha, getting the knowledge, getting at night, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to do this work. This dunya is temporary. Akhirah is long. So you and I, being intelligent people, have to make a decision and effort proportional to the time you live in the dunya and proportional to the time you live in akhirah. Do you know how many years there is hijab is? One of the examples, Allah said, 50,000 years. So, you live 50 years and retire, now 50,000 years. Please, you think one time. Please, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open my heart and guide me to the next one. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayy jalala, bil ladhina samir wa qawr, fakirina wa qawr. Allahumma khid lana wa zhubu bana, asrafana fi amrina, asabbit akhira bana, Allahumma sinna fi lutana, في الأمور كلها وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وأجرنا من آخر أتمنى رحمة الله